Though they may not always be as recognized as dogs, cats can be just as friendly, sweet, and even heroic, and no medium displays this better than animated movies and shows. Unfortunately, there are some other animated cats that live up to the stereotype of being snobby, uncaring, troublesome, or mean. But which cartoon cats deserve to be held up as the best of the litter, and which ones are about as pleasant as a bowl of sour milk? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Cartoon Cats – Good to Evil. As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and noble felines and working our way down. These cats are the good. Starting with our most good kitty cat, we have Thomas O'Malley from the Aristocats. Stray cats don't have the best reputation. Thomas, however, defies all the stereotypes. When we first meet him, he's a smooth talking charmer who's only interested in flirting with a pretty face. Why, your eyes are like sapphires sparkling so bright. But when he realizes that Duchess has kittens and that they're all lost, O'Malley quickly changes his tune and goes out of his way to help the family get home. He's nothing but kind to the Aristocats, helping when one of the kittens is in trouble and teaching them things. As much as they were a surprise to him, O'Malley almost immediately begins acting like a father figure. He's also kind towards Duchess and gives her and her kittens a fun time at Scat Cat's place when they need to rest for the night. Later on, when O'Malley asks Duchess and the kittens to stay with him, he respects her refusal and doesn't look down on her for being loyal to her owner. Along with being friendly and fun, O'Malley is loyal and brave, fighting off Edgar when he captures the Aristocats and tries to ship them off to Timbuktu. In the end, we see that while he enjoyed the freedom he had as a stray, he's willing to give it up and be a house cat if it means staying with Duchess and the kittens. With no dark side or even any real flaws to him, we felt we have to give O'Malley the gold medal of good. In second place, we have Shrek's Puss in Boots. Puss started the series as an assassin for hire, taking King Harold's gold in exchange for killing Shrek. However, we learn that Puss is more hiss than bite, and it doesn't take much for Shrek to defeat him showing that Puss maybe isn't that dark. The king offered me might and go and have a litter of brothers. When Shrek shows mercy, Puss vows to repay his kindness and promises to stay loyal to Shrek, a promise that he keeps throughout the rest of the films. Being a swordsman, Puss is quick to jump into battle, especially if it's for his friends, and has been described as a fiercely loyal and honorable cat. When Shrek and Fiona have their babies, he's patient and let them pull on his tail. In a spin-off series, we see that Puss used to be a hero of San Ricardo before Humpty Dumpty framed him. Even if it wasn't his fault, he tries to redeem himself in the eyes of the townsfolk and his adoptive mother. Though Puss is good, he can go rogue. He once gave in to his cat instincts and tried to eat one of the three blind mice. He's also a womanizer, flirting with multiple cats at the same time. Even with these flaws, he's still an adorable, suave, boot-wearing hero. Speaking of heroes, next is Mau Mau from Mau Mau Heroes of Pure Heart. As the youngest in a family filled with heroes, Mau Mau wants to become a great hero himself. He takes it upon himself to be the sheriff of the Pure Heart Valley and is always looking to go on grand adventures and help others. Though he can be harsh or too enthusiastic, he still follows a strong moral compass and is willing to give up his aspirations in order to do what is right or help someone. He's also a good mentor and father figure to Adora Bat and is respectful towards King Snugglemane, even when he's annoyed by him. Unfortunately, it only makes sense that someone as strong-willed as Mau Mau would also be stubborn. He'll push himself or others if he believes it's for the greater good, claiming things like heroes are never wrong or heroes don't get sick. He also has a temper and can get frustrated when things go wrong. As such, his behavior can hinder his popularity with the residents of the valley. Thankfully, while Mau Mau hopes to be a legendary hero, he doesn't do it for glory or popularity. He wants to keep others safe and protected. Up next is Tuna Sandwich from Kid Cosmic. Like the other local heroes, Tuna Sandwich may not seem like your average hero at first. In fact, he's mostly a lazy cat who only cares about taking naps and eating sandwiches that Kid gives him. Once he's given the Red Power Stone, Tuna becomes more active. He'll do what he can to protect his teammates when he gets visions of them getting hurt, even if it means walking for miles in the hot desert sun twice. That's no small feat, especially for a chubby cat. 
Needless to say, Tuna can be determined when it comes to his team, even going up against larger alien threats and government agents. Tuna is also loyal to Kid, trusting in him and believing him when he says he has a plan. Though he may not be the strongest or fastest cat, his bravery and willingness to fight proves that he, like the rest of his team, is meant to be a hero. And spoiler, Tuna won't be the only Craig McCracken cat character that we have on this list. Next is Top Tough Agent Kitty Catswell from Tough Puppy. As partner to Dudley, Kitty's often the one who has to stay focused on missions. She's skilled and is considered to be the best of the best. Being a super spy is no small task, but while she stops plenty of baddies, she may not be the most moral person. Kitty can have a temper and certainly isn't afraid to fight Dudley when pushed to her limits, occasionally being just as immature as him. There was also the time in the episode Mind Trap where she was hesitant to save her boss, the Chief, from Doom after he insulted her fish cookies and threw them into a dumpster. Okay, she's reading my mind. Don't think about how gross her cookies are. Even with these not-so-dignified moments, Kitty for the most part is kind, brave, and determined to protect her city from supervillains. Ice Cream Kitty from the 2012 TMNT series is next. Once an ordinary stray cat, thanks to Mikey's carelessness and being a mute again, this stray became part ice cream. What have I done? Because she has to be careful about melting, Ice Cream Kitty spends most of her time in the lair's freezer or in a portable cooler. However, she's still one of Mikey's closest friends, playing cards and other games with him and being a good listener whenever Mikey's upset. She'll occasionally help in a fight as well, like where she attacked the Rat King. Though having a bite to her, Ice Cream Kitty is really just a sweet cat, in more ways than one. Though he may only have a small role in the film, Sergeant Tibbs from 101 Dalmatians definitely deserves some recognition. He works on a rescue team with the captain, a horse, and the colonel, an old sheepdog. Together, the three of them rescue animals that are in trouble, like the 101 Dalmatian puppies. Kids, follow me. Though he may be skittish and meek, He's loyal and never disobeys an order. He's also courageous when it comes to his rescue missions. Although being the smallest and weakest of the team, Tibbs tries to get the puppies out before Jasper and Horace can stop them and does his best to shield the puppies when the goons try to attack them. Sergeant Tibbs may not look like much, but when it comes to animal rescues, he's the best soldier a pet could ask for. Wrapping up the good, we have Gordon, the first of our Cat Scratch characters. He's the middle brother of his family and has the strongest moral compass out of all of his brothers. Though we're not entirely sure if he's actually Scottish, he values the honor of his plan and does good above all else. He's also often trying to convince his brothers, mainly Mr. Blick, to do the right thing. Gordon is loyal to his friends, but can also be prideful, like when he refused to give up the broccoli that his crush, Human Kimberly, gave him, despite being allergic to it. He once lied to Human Kimberly, telling her that he had a unicorn just so he could impress her. He let me ride it! He'll also follow Mr. Blick's schemes, like when he was willing to disguise himself as a girl to sneak into a slumber party that had root beer. But even with these faults, Gordon is still the most righteous out of the three brothers. That's it for the good characters. Now it's time to descend into neutral territory. The cats that aren't as heroic, but aren't necessarily bad either. This is the gray area. First up, we have another cat scratch cat, Waffle. Although he may act more like a dog and can be just as rambunctious, he's most certainly a cat, albeit a strange one. As the youngest of the three brothers, he doesn't have as strong of a morality as Gordon, but at the same time isn't as mean or bossy as Mr. Blick. Instead of focusing on helping people like Gordon does, Waffle focuses more on his goofy goals of having fun and playing with his pet newts. He'll live in the moment and is an optimist, as well as a lovable ditz. Though it's easy to manipulate him, Waffle has his lines that he won't cross. Mainly, he hates liars and cheaters and will get upset if someone lies to him or tries to cheat him. Although he isn't much of an active hero, he's still kind-hearted at times, so we're putting him right on the edge of the gray tier. Next is Gumball Waterson from The Amazing World of Gumball. Over the course of his five seasons, Gumball became the definition of a chaotic neutral. He went from being a naive but kind-hearted kid to someone who would actively conduct schemes in order to get his way. He can be rude, as well as lazy, and can be an all-around jerk with a huge ego. But as much as he'll scheme for selfish reasons, Gumball will also go out of his way to help or save someone. He cares about his family and friends, 
his girlfriend Penny, and his neighbor Mr. Robinson, and can be protective. Sometimes Gumball can be a hero, but other times he can be a nuisance, and even when he tries to help, he can sometimes be a bother, like when he tried to give Claire her happy ending. We can't place him any higher, but we don't feel like we can place him any lower either. We're cutting him just a bit of slack, given that he's still a kid, or rather, kitten. We finally come to our most famous cat on this list, Garfield. Everyone loves Garfield, but as lovable as he can be, he has faults. Along with his most famous trait, his laziness, he can be rude to both his owner John and his friends, Odie and Nermal, often insulting them. Garfield is also famous for kicking Odie off counters and trying to mail Nermal out of the country. He can be smug and sarcastic, and will take as much food as he can for himself, especially if it's lasagna. As mean as he can be, he still cares about both John and Odie and can be protective of them, showing that along with having a big stomach, he's also got a pretty decent sized heart. Up next is Snowball the Second from The Simpsons. There isn't much to say about Snowball the Second compared to The Simpsons' other pets, Santa's little helper and Spider Pig. We know that before the series, the first Snowball was hit by a truck. Despite being a replacement, Snowball the Second still has a bond with Lisa. Though they aren't extremely close, Snowball the Second will let Lisa dress her up or cuddle with her. She has one heroic moment, when she pulled Homer out of a burning treehouse built by the Amish after Santa's little helper ran away. However, there was also the time where she found herself a secret family that she would run off to, just to get extra food, showing that she can be sneaky as well. This is worse than when we thought Mom was having an affair! For the most part, Snowball II is just in the background, and doesn't get nearly as much spotlight, so we have to put her in the gray tier. All the way from Wonderland, it's the Cheshire Cat. It's no surprise that the Cheshire Cat is in the gray area. He's famous for his huge grin, his ability to disappear, and his mischievous nature. He acts as a guide for Alice through her adventures in Wonderland, and can sometimes be sympathetic towards her or give her advice on what path to take next. Unfortunately, he'll cause trouble for her as well, getting a kick out of it too. He's also proud of being mad, with some saying he's the most mad creature in Wonderland, and this craziness prevents him from feeling any fear. He isn't afraid of the Red Queen, which may explain why he doesn't see any harm in making the Queen angry with Alice. He could make her really angry. He doesn't do enough good to be a hero, but he certainly isn't a villain either. Perhaps the best label for him is just mad. Next, we have Fluffy from Rugrats. Although not as mean as her owner Angelica, this kitty is snobby. She can be moody as well as standoffish, and will occasionally break or mess with things, whether it's an accident or just out of curiosity. The biggest example of this was in the episode Fluffy vs. Spike. Although you can argue that this was mainly the fault of Angelica, since she repeatedly blamed the messes on poor Spike, we also see Fluffy acting out in the episode Babysitting Fluffy. But again, this isn't entirely her fault, since her reactions come from Chucky attempting to follow all the instructions that Angelica gave him, or when he and Tommy try to treat her like a dog. However, once the babies start treating Fluffy better, Fluffy is in turn nicer to them. Though antagonistic, it all comes from a realistic place. She isn't a bad cat, just a bit troublesome. Up next, we have both Sylvester from Looney Tunes and Tom from Tom and Jerry. Both of these cats are driven by their hunting instincts, and despite all the pain their respective enemies put them through, they still chase them in the hopes of finally getting that meal. We can't blame Sylvester or Tom for wanting to eat, circle of life and all that, and we know that Tweety Bird and Jerry can provoke their feline foes into attacking. Though we may disapprove of them wanting to eat cute animals, we can understand it. What puts them this low is how violent and greedy they are. However, we're giving a bit of leeway on Sylvester, since Tom is certainly the more cruel of these two, and how he enjoys tormenting and getting revenge on Jerry. Even so, we can't help but feel a little bad for these guys. We're placing Cat from Cat Dog at the bottom of our gray tier. Cat, naturally, is the opposite of his brother Dog. His most notable traits are that he can be a snob and can be selfish and greedy. Whenever he gets any power or authority, he lets it get to his head. He also manipulates Dog into getting what he wants, since Cat knows he's much smarter than his brother. But as much as Cat may put his pleasure or goals above Dog, whenever he sees that Dog is in danger or hurt, Cat will jump into action to help him out. 
Examples of this include when he regretted how hard he pushed dog during a dog sled race, or when he realized how bad their flea situation had gotten, and was willing to take a bath so dog wouldn't have to suffer. He'll also miss dog whenever he's away for too long, despite all the trouble that dog causes him, and encourages him to become dog the mighty when he loses his crime-fighting spirit. Cat loves dog, and though he bickers with dog, he's always there for him at dog's lowest points. Stay out of sight and keep quiet. Even when Cat is at his worst, his love for his brother still shines, which is enough to keep him from being a full-on antagonist or villain. That wraps up the gray area. Now it's time to delve into the truly bad kitties. These characters are the bad to evil. First up, we have Sai and Am, the Siamese cats from Lady and the Tramp. Even while ignoring the, uh, controversy behind these two characters, We are Siamese, if you please. Sai and Am are problematic and antagonistic. Although they're only in the film for a short while, they had an impact. Brought over to Lady's house by Aunt Sarah, Sai and Am spent the entire visit causing havoc, from knocking over a vase and trying to eat the family bird and fish, to attempting to steal a bottle of milk from Jim Deere and Darling's baby. Are we finding baby? There are milk nearby. Of course, every act they did they pinned on Lady. They show no remorse for doing this. These cats are sneaky and love to cause trouble and make messes for their own amusement. It's also implied that they enjoy taking advantage of Aunt Sarah and don't care for her nearly as much as Lady cares for her owners. As a result of their actions, Lady gets muzzled and the two cats get no consequences for all the harm they caused. Maybe they aren't villainous masterminds, but they're definitely spoiled and mischievous. Up next is Mr. Blick, our final Cat Scratch character. Mr. Blick is the oldest of his brothers, and certainly the bossiest. He also comes up with most of their plans. He can also be a huge jerk, being prone to insulting and hitting Gordon and Waffle. He can be greedy, despite already being rich, and has a huge temper. Despite all of his awful tendencies, he can show his softer side. When he thinks that a monster has eaten Gordon, he immediately goes into rage mode and tries to avenge his brother. My brother. He'll also be nice to Waffle, letting him wear their important hat or drive their car. Granted, these moments don't make up for his awfulness, but they do show that he's not completely heartless. Though similar to Cat in a lot of ways, we're putting him a few notches lower because his good moments are a lot less frequent than Cat's. Wrapping up our classic Disney cats, we have Lucifer from Cinderella. Here, we have a case of a cat taking after their owner. Lucifer is spoiled, hateful, and gluttonous, especially when it comes to mice. His only loyalty lies with Lady Tremaine, and he's happy to wreck all of Cinderella's hard work while she's trying to clean, not caring if it gets her into trouble. Though clumsy, he can be clever and cunning, acting as a threat towards the mice, Jock and Gus. He's also antagonistic towards the family's pet dog, Bruno, getting Bruno scolded and sent outside with his tricks. In the second movie, he breaks his deal with the mice, even after they help him win over his feline love interest. Then, in the climax of the third movie, Lucifer's evil gets taken up a notch after Lady Tremaine uses the fairy godmother's wand to turn him human. He follows her orders to drive Cinderella far away from the castle, fighting off Cinderella as she tries to escape and nearly drives the carriage off the cliff. Though we understand that most of his worst actions come from Tremaine's influence, we can see that he can do bad all on his own. In third place, we have Lil Bits from Wander Over Yonder. See, told you we'd have another Craig McCracken cat on here. Being the cutest kitty in the galaxy certainly has her perks. Able to use her hypnotic stare to make people obey her, Lil Bits made a living being a bounty hunter that tricked her victims with an innocent lost kitty act. Despite all the kindness Wanda has shown her, she betrayed him and tried to hand him over to Lord Hater, not caring if Wanda was tortured and destroyed afterwards. After being defeated by Sylvia, Lil Bits decided to go on her own, going from bounty hunter to planetary ruler. She manages to take over an entire planet with her adowable cat videos, forcing the citizens to hand over all their money. I can also have my revenge on the two of you! Had it not been for Sylvia once again taking her down, she likely would have done this to several other planets. Though she may not have much in the way of actual power compared to the galaxy's other threats, her cruelty and selfishness make this kitty a villain through and through. Getting the silver medal of evil is the assassin Meemaw from Adventure Time. 
Though a minor villain, her evilness shines through. In her premiere episode, Meemaw tried to assassinate both Wildberry Princess and Jake. She doesn't even do this for revenge, but instead just wants to gain full membership into the Guild of Assassins. Throughout the episode, Meemaw repeatedly threatens and poisons Jake in an attempt to force him to kill Wildberry Princess in her place, since he blew her cover. She never shows sympathy or regret for her actions, even smashing the antidote and taunting Finn when it looks like Jake is about to succumb to the poison. She appears in a couple of more episodes after this, as a bounty hunter as well as a member of Gumball's army, and is just as cruel and willing to kill, and vows revenge against both Finn and Jake. There is never any indication that she could be redeemed, or that she even wants to be. This cat is all about her kills, and though she may not be the most successful assassin in the land, attempted murder can still put you low on the morality spectrum. Landing at our top spot for evil kitties, we have Cats from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Though Courage has faced many enemies, Cats is without a doubt one of the most memorable and most evil. Cats was there from the beginning, running a motel where he tried to feed guests to his pet spiders. From there, he ran several other business ventures in the hopes of making money while also crushing any competition. This spans from a vacation resort to a confectionery shop to a submarine cruise line. Cats is sadistic, callous, and malevolent, and enjoys tormenting Courage as well as playing games, where he has an advantage against his opponents like racquetball or a staring contest. He was also part of Eustace's villain team-up, though this was more out of wanting to get rid of Courage once and for all, and not because he was particularly loyal to Eustace or the other villains. Cats is wicked and has no regard for life, so we feel there's no cat that deserves the gold medal more than him. Alright guys, but what do you think? Let us know right now if you agree. Be sure to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons. But most importantly, stay wicked.